guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Yes, it has been so long since I've been able to do a proper tutorial for you guys. I did just have carpal tunnel surgery, so if you're not already following me over on Instagram and Facebook, uh, I did update you guys with uh, what's going on with my hand and how that went, but I'm finally feeling better and I'm able to get into the sewing room and I can actually bring you a proper tutorial. So today I'm going to make it super easy, but kind of in the spring mode, I'm just getting into, you know, bulbs and flowers and planting and it's just, you know, around this time of year, of course, everyone's kind of thinking about this. So this project is inspired by just like a planter, something that you would put your plant in, but of course can be used for so many other things and you will see in one moment. So this is the project that we're going to do today. It is super easy and quick. It is a knot line. So there's no lining, but it is nice and rigid. I used a really heavy duty canvas for the body of the bag. And then I used some really cute cork for the handles. Um, so this is the basket that I made first. And I will show you what I envisioned when I was making this basket. How beautiful is this? So I made this super, you know, simple basket, which I thought was, you know, it really gives you that minimalistic look. And then of course a gorgeous lily right in there, a calla lily ready for spring. I think this will be so cute and pretty to put around the house. But of course this basket can be used for so many things. I will show you what we will be making in this tutorial, which is going to be the two-toned version. So of course with the, the one that I just showed you, it's going to be plain and very easy to figure out. So I'm going to just show you guys how to make this. I will have measurements for basically eight different baskets, okay? And then 16 different ways you can make this basket. So it's going to be a pretty in-depth pattern and totally free, um, but I made three different sizes here um, so we can nest them together but how cute is this wouldn't it be cute to have like three little baskets with like flowers in it or something but you can easily take one of the larger baskets put a large handle and then this could be an Easter basket and how cute would that be just to put like a little monogram or with some like vinyl or something on the front so cute and adorable so like I said the pattern will be linked in the description box below or in the comment section so go over to charmed by Ashley and check it out there's a PDF that you can download and print so you don't have to keep referring back and of course if you love the tutorial don't forget to pin it when you get over there and share it with all your friends and let's get into the tutorial Okay, so in this video, I will be doing the two-tone version. So over at the blog post, I'll have this one, and then of course the plain basket version. I'll have up to six different measurements, so for shorter baskets and taller baskets, depending on the size that you need. But of course, you can customize it, so you can check over at the blog post how exactly to do that. I'll be using a heavy-duty canvas, so this is not a lined basket. I'm using cork for the handles, but if you really want to elevate the look of your baskets, you could use some old purse handles or just use some canvas and then make some strapping out of that. Um, so the canvas that I am using, uh, it does fray. So, I mean, you could use waterproof canvas, which doesn't really fray. So this, of course, is an extra step if you are using a fraying type material. Um, so I will be serging the edges, but if um, you don't want to sew the edges, you can use something like the this. This is the Fiskars Pinking Shears, and um, this will stop your fabric from fraying. It won't stop it entirely, but it does a pretty good job. Um, so I will be using my serger today, which I will show you very shortly, but if not, you can always use a regular sewing machine and use a zigzag stitch right along the edges of all your fabric pieces. And that's just gonna prevent any further fraying. So I'm just gonna do all of the sides and I even did the, um, the base of the bag also. So the inside of the, of the um, basket is of course not finished. You will see this, but that's fine. I mean, especially if you're making them for yourself or if you're you know, gonna put a plant in it or toys, you know, it's totally fine. So this is how it looks when you serge the edges. And that's just gonna help to, uh, you know, make your bag or your basket, I keep calling it a bag, make your basket a little bit more tougher. So um, 
now that I've done all of those pieces, we can start to assemble it. So I'm going to take the top portion and then the bottom portion and place those on top of each other, lining up one of the long edges. If you have a, um, a fabric that has a right or wrong side, just make sure that your fabrics are right sides together in this step. And I'll be doing a quarter inch seam allowance, just enough so that it doesn't show the surged edges or my stitches. So quarter inch, half an inch, whatever you want to do. And then after that, we're going to flip it right sides out like this. Before we go on to sewing that top stitch, I'm going to just quickly, while I have my iron out, I'm going to hem the top of the basket. So I'm going to fold it down a quarter of an inch and then again a half an inch. And I'm just doing this step just so that I can make things just a little bit more easier on myself. It's a lot more difficult once the basket's assembled to do the hem at the top. So just pre-ironing it beforehand will help make things a lot easier. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that top stitch along the seam that I had. So if you have or if you're doing a basket that doesn't have the two tone look like this and of course all those steps um, won't be necessary. So I'm just going to take the rectangle now and I'm going to place that uh, right sides together. And then I'm just going to fold out the hem like this, just so that I can sew right along the whole entire thing. And I'll do a half inch seam allowance. This is kind of important just to get the measurements correct, um, just so that the circle fits in nicely. If it doesn't fit in nicely, you might need to just increase your seam allowance on the side. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, an eighth of an inch can just throw things off and it won't fit perfectly. So just keep that in mind when you are attaching the bottom of your bag, that if it doesn't fit, if the circle appears to be too small, then adjust the side seam allowance. So now I'm just going to use my clips and I'm going to install the base of the bag. And when I got to the seam, I just flattened the seam. I spread open the seam and I just, so that it's less bulky in that area. And I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around the bottom of the bag. I keep calling it a bag, but it is a basket. I mean, it could be a bag. It just depends, I guess, what you want to use it for. <laughs> you guys get the idea. So um, clips, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using. Uh, it's, it's so difficult because clips kind of slip, but pins, you end up stabbing yourself a lot. So it's a trade-off. Maybe I should use my heavy duty clips next time. That's a thought. I have some like heavy duty ones that you get like at the hardware store. They're little and they have like little rubber things on the, uh, where you put your fingers. Anyways, I'm off on a rant now. Um, so now I'm just going to quickly do that hem. So I just folded it back down at that side seam and then I'll just sew down the hem. So this is how it is looking so far. So not too bad. Like, I mean, it's not lined, but it's perfect for what I need it for, which is to put a plant in, um, or, you know, just maybe some towels or hand towels or something like that. Something cute. Um, so now I'm just going to place my little cork handles. I'm just using a little piece, like a strip of three quarter inch. Um, you could double it up, you know, cut it to be like an inch and a half and then fold it and then do some top stitching on the handles and make them a little bit more cute, especially if you're like thinking about selling these or giving them as gifts. Um, so I'm just going to evenly place the handles. On either side there's really not any right or wrong way to do this just however you think looks best I think they're probably placed about two inches apart like the top like the, the sides are like you know space two inches so I'm just gonna do a little X pattern to secure the little handles on so I try to do this very carefully just so that it kind of all matches all of them look cohesive together. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I am um, trying out some new editing techniques. So um, I hope you are enjoying how it is looking. There is more to come from Charmed by Ashley. So I hope you stay tuned and 
definitely subscribe. Follow over on Instagram where I post all kinds of things and a little bit of a look into my daily life. And of course the Facebook group where you can share any projects that you make um, from the channel or just anything else that you make on a daily. We love to see, you know, all kinds of projects that everybody's working on. Um, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and here it is. How cute is this? So I made like a little set of nesting baskets. They're so super cute. And I put a plant in one and I'll probably use others for just storage. And they're just so cute and simple. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys.